Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we will be taking a look at what is in this box. Now this is off eBay and I'm not exactly sure how much I paid for it because this came bundled with a computer which will be revealed on the channel soon. I paid £250 for this box and the computer. Now, there was also a buy it now price. This was an auction. The buy it now was 400 but no one bid, so I got it for 250 I didn't know this would be coming in its box, but when I opened my door yesterday and saw this sitting there, I was quite surprised and very, it was a very nice surprise. I wasn't expecting it to come in its original box. Now, if you're not sure what this is, this is an Apple Cinema Display. This is a 20 inch one, so it is the smallest one they ever made. I believe this is a 2004 model. I've only ever seen one aluminium cinema display once. That was in cash converters in Blackpool. That was being sold for £20. I was going to buy it, but it turns out they didn't have the power brick for it. Now, if you didn't know, these use a really weird cable with lots of connectors on it. I'll show you that in a minute. So I didn't end up buying that because I didn't know if it works or not. They were claiming it was fully working, but how would they know if they didn't have the power cable? So today we're just going to be taking a look at what I've got. I've not opened this yet and the pictures on eBay weren't particularly good. So I've got no idea what sort of condition this is, but I'm not too bothered because I'm going to consider this as being free because the computer that I bought, I've regularly seen them go for 250 to 300 pounds on their own. So yeah, this, I'm just gonna think of it as being free and then if it doesn't work, oh well, I've got a cool box. I've never seen one of these boxes before, so this is really nice. So let's get started here. Of course, cinema display 20 inch widescreen. I believe this is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I'll get to the specifications a bit later, they are on the top here. But this picture of the display is the actual size. It says down there, actual size. That's actually really cool. Now this is a really big and heavy box, so I'm not sure how this filming is going to go. But on this side, there is the slide profile. Now today, that looks like a very thick monitor, but back in 2003 when these first came out, I believe, this is pretty thin considering most people still had CRTs. On the back of this box, what do we have? We've got the same as the front. Cinema display 20 inch widescreen. Now this box isn't in the best of condition, but if you consider how old it is, this one's from 2004, and it came through the postal system like this. No protection on it, my address label was just stuck on it. I've managed to peel off all the tape, and I think it's come up pretty nicely. Now, on the other side here, we've got the Apple logo, and at the bottom we've got the original label. That is very nice to see, still stuck on there. I believe everything that would have come on this box is still stuck on it. I don't know about the accessories which are in size. As far as I'm aware, it's just the monitor and the cable, but who knows, we might get a pleasant surprise. Now, what I'm going to have to do to show the top is carefully put this down. I'm not sure which way up the monitor is inside of here. So now let's take a look at this. Okay, here we are. I'm not too sure how well you'll be able to see this, but here, yet again, cinema display, 20 inch widescreen. There is a picture of it just there. Up here it says for Mac, for Windows, and it's Energy Star rated. These do use a lot of power. That's why not many people use them these days. They emit quite a lot of heat and use quite a lot of power compared to modern monitors. But this thing was pretty good for its day. Now here we've got some of the specs. So we've got a 20 inch viewable active matrix LCD, supports resolutions up to 1680 by 1050, requires Power Mac G4 or G5 with Nvidia graphics cards or ATI Radeon 7500 or better graphics cards or PowerBook G4 with a DVI port. Now I do have a G5 that this will work with. I've also got a PowerBook that this will work with, but we are going to test this today on my MacBook Pro, my Retina 2015 one, just because it's the closest computer to me 
and it should definitely work with that. That's as long as I've got an adapter because my MacBook Pro does not have DVI out and this only takes a DVI in, but so I'll have to see if I've got an adapter or maybe there might be one with this because this was used with a modern Mac which has HDMI on it, so maybe there's an adapter inside, but next it says requires Mac OS 10 version 10.2.8 or later. That's a very old version. Now we're up to Mac OS 11 finally, so Mac OS 10 version 2 on here. I don't have a computer that has that, but it should support any which is higher than that. Also, TCO 03 as well. Then it's just got it in other languages here as well. I think for a 20-inch display, 1680 by 1050 is quite a nice resolution. I don't believe I've got any monitors of that resolution. I've got two 20-inch monitors. They are both 1600 by 900, but they are 16 by 9, so I'm guessing for a 16 by 10, this might have been a common one. I'm not too sure, and now I think it's time to open this box. All right, I've got a bit of a higher angle now. I was going to stand this box up and open it because the front does fold down, but I didn't want the monitor to fall out, so I'm going to do it lying down. Of course, the tape has already been cut. It's been cut for a lot of years, and we should just be able to open this up. And there we are. This is the original packing in here. I'm guessing this is where it would have had the instruction manual and the Apple stickers there. It doesn't look like we've got those. That's not a problem. I didn't even think I was getting a box, so this box is a good bonus as it is. Let's now lift this out. And it looks like the monitor is in its original protective sheet that it would have come in when it was brand new. There is a space down here for something. I'm not sure what went in there, but it looks like we've got the cable and we've got the power adapter. So this is indeed a 65 watt power adapter. It's quite chunky, but because the cable is so short on the monitor, you've got to keep this on your desk in most circumstances, unless you've got somewhere you can dangle it underneath. But most people had to keep these on their desk. Luckily it's not a bad looking unit so if I do have to keep it on my desk that's not really too much of a big deal. I'm going to put that off to the side and let's try and get this monitor out. I'm not sure which of these cables are attached at the back so let's just see. It looks like this is the power cable that goes into the power brick. Here it is, it's one of the special Apple ones that goes flush into the back. Very nice, I'll move that off to the side. And I think I'm just going to have to try and pull this out. Apologies about the noise that you may be able to hear. The rubbish collection people are going past, but that's not going to stop me. I'm not sure how to do this. And it looks like it is out. I'm going to quickly put that on the floor because it is quite heavy and it looks like that's everything that was in the box. So no original accessories or instruction manual, but I'm not too bothered about that. The fact that I got this monitor for free or such a good price is a good enough thing anyway. So I will now move this box off to the side and then we will take a look at the actual monitor. Okay, so here is the monitor with its protective sleeve on. Let's take this off. And I believe this is original because it's got a cutout for the stand at the back. That's something really nice. Usually people don't keep packaging like this with Apple things, so it's nice to see that that was kept. And the first thing I'm going to do before looking at the monitor is just look at this cable. So this monitor uses one single cable out of the back and that single cable splits off into four. And it looks like the DVI connector has an adapter on it. It's actually got a HDMI adapter, so this means we can indeed use it with my MacBook Pro. That is very nice to see that they've kept that attached. Now, we also have a USB connection here. That's because there is a USB hub in the back of this monitor. So you connect this to your computer, then you get two more 
on the back of your monitor. I guess that's where you could plug in your keyboard and mouse if you so desired. I'm not sure what USB revision this is, but I will try and put that on the screen if I can find out. The next connector we have is FireWire. This is FireWire 400. Why do we have FireWire 400 on here? That's because there's a FireWire hub in the back of here too. There's two FireWire ports on here. Of course, FireWire 400, that is the latest FireWire revision at the time this came out. 800 was, of course, quicker. That didn't come for another few years. And finally, we've got this connector, which kind of looks like USB-C, but this is from a time long before USB-C. And what this connects to is the power supply. You plug this from the monitor into the power supply, and then you connect the power supply to the wall with the IEC cable, which luckily we got included. So that is how that works. Let's now take a look around the monitor. Let's see if it's in good condition or not. First off, just looking at the front, there doesn't seem to be much scratching on it, if any at all. Actually, there's a little nick out of it there. That's kind of unfortunate that it's on the front, but that's not really a problem. I'll zoom in a little bit for this. So down there, there's a little scratch. There it looks like there's also one up here, but the rest of it looks to be in very good condition. There's some dirt on the screen, and some smears from where someone's wiped it with the wrong thing, but that's nothing to be concerned about. That should come up quite nicely. Of course, little mirrored Apple logo down there looking very nice. The stand is very similar to the ones found on iMacs until a couple of weeks ago. I guess the 27 inch one is still sold, so very similar stand to that. I'm guessing they got the inspiration for the iMac stands from this monitor. It's very, very nice. So that is the front aluminium, of course. Here is the side. So the sides are made of white plastic, and here we've got some touch sensitive buttons. They're not click buttons, you just put your finger gently on them and they do what they say. So we've got brightness up and down, we've also got power. That's pretty much all the control that is on this monitor. Everything else can be done from inside Mac OS. Here is the back. We've got a little Apple logo up there. It's not very visible unless you're looking at it straight on, so that is quite discreet. We've got the foot here and there you can see where the one cable plugs in. That is not removable, so once it's in, it's in. And if this cable dies for whatever reason, I'm not really sure what you're going to do about that. But down here you can see our two Firewire 400s and our USBs. There's also a Kensington lock in there to try and stop people stealing it. On the other side, it's just white plastic, nothing going on here and I don't think there's anything going on on the bottom either, no, that's just solid aluminium. So that is pretty much all there is to look at about this monitor. So I think the next thing we can do is plug it in. Okay, so I've now plugged it in and you can see what I meant by this brick having to stay so close. There's not much length between all the cables and the brick. So for now, we are going to have to keep it on the desk. When I set this up properly, if I use this monitor for anything, I'll see if there's anything I can do about that, but probably not. It's not a bad looking thing to keep on the desk. Anyway, let's now turn on my computer. I've plugged in HDMI and USB. There's no FireWire on this computer, so we can't test that. And the light has come on on here, so it looks like it is receiving a signal. Let's see, the computer is just booting up and hopefully we will get a signal on the display. There we go, it's coming on, there we go, and my computer has decided that this is now the primary display, and the internal is a secondary. Now that is looking rather dim at the moment, in fact you can hardly see that on the video, but because this is old, flat panel technology, it will take a while to warm up and get to its full brightness, but we can try out the brightness controls on the side. So let's try them, let's see if they do anything. That does seem to be getting brighter. I think that's probably about as bright as it's going to get. There's no indication on the screen as to how bright we can make it, but I'm guessing that's as bright as it will go. And in real life, that looks quite bright. I'm not sure how it looks on camera because the recording lights are on, but I'll now get a close-up of the monitor so we can take a look a bit better. All right, so I've got a bit of a close-up, and I must say, 
the colours on this display look very nice. I've heard a lot of people say about these older Apple displays and the ones on the PowerBooks and the early MacBook Pros. They're a nice warm display. They're kind of yellowy and I do like it. They're not very colour accurate, I suppose, but they do look very, very nice. I'm not really sure what to do to test this because it seems to be working. As I move my cursor around, it seems to be working just fine. I guess what we can do is bring up a video, play that, and see how that looks. Okay, so I'm now playing one of my videos on here. It's playing back in 4K. Of course, this is not a 4K display, far from it, in fact. But that video quality looks very nice. We've got black bars at the top and bottom. That's because my video was filmed in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and this monitor is 16 by 10 that's just something you've got to put up with with these monitors most apple displays are 16 by 10 the one on my macbook pro is in fact it's just the way they've done it for a long time but the colors on this are looking very very nice very warm for a what is probably considered quite a low resolution these days it does look very, very nice. At the moment I can't see that there's any damage to this display, there was some dirt on it, but I can't see any dead pixels or anything like that. I think that's enough looking at that video. One thing I would like to do is open Final Cut Pro and just take a look at how much can fit on my timeline. I usually edit either on the internal display in my MacBook Pro or sometimes I use the 1080p 24 inch one so this is a lower resolution and the smaller screen so I'm not sure how much we'll be able to fit on but I guess there's only one way to find out. Okay so I've now opened a Final Cut project this is from a video which has not come out yet I actually filmed it two months ago but it's not come out yet it's nothing too exciting I've just been busy doing other things but it looks like it can still fit quite a lot on the display. Of course, it can't play back in a particularly high resolution. I, of course, film in 4K. I cannot play it back in 4K, but still, this looks very nice on here. Let's try just playing a bit. It seems to be playing back just fine. I can see plenty of my timeline here. I can see everything. This is actually not too bad. I could probably quite happily edit a video on this thing. Now I'm not really sure what else I can test on this thing, it seems to be working just fine, it's a very nice looking monitor, even quite close up. You can see the pixels because it is a lower resolution, but it does look very, very nice. Now this has got me thinking, how can I use this? I mean, maybe I can use this with my MacBook Pro, I'm not too sure, maybe this will be fine for video editing on it, it looks nicer than my 24 inch monitors even though those are bigger and a higher resolution this has a higher pixel count per inch which is nice to see so i would like to do something with this monitor long term i don't just want to put it in its box and forget about it so i think in another video i will put this on my main editing setup and we will see how it goes but for now i think this will be it it works and it looks very, very nice. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it was interesting in some way. In a future one, we will put this on my main setup and see how that goes. And in another video, we will also see what the computer was, which I bought with this. So get subscribed to see those things. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.